Um, Actually, first off, I'm really happy that we were able to sponsor this great event, and um, I would like to thank everybody who helps uh, with chairing the sessions and uh, making this uh, a good event and uh, doing all these services. Great job. Feels good to be here. Um, so I will try to make a good mix between some basic information and some advanced information. I know a lot of uh, the faces in here already, some familiar faces who know what QField is quite, uh, quite precisely. And I'll try to bring in some new information of uh, what went on over the last couple of months. Um, but on the other hand, I'll also try to cover some of the bases. Um, right. So basically, um, I'll start with something completely different. Um, over the years of development of QField, we realized that there's quite a big demand in, in forestry overall. And so we decided that we would call um, the, all the QField uh, version 3 series based on names of, of forests, um, as uh, also they play a quite important, crucial role in uh, climate, biodiversity, and, and so on. And um, annually, over 15 billion, billion trees are cut down, so that's over three times uh, the size of Estonia, and that's each year going on like that. So I think uh, that we are able to deliver a product that helps um, protect forests and uh, helps to make them grow, um, preserve them, is, is, is really nice. Um, Estonia is uh, over half covered by, by, by forests, so we really need to take care of this. But we are not only here to talk, or I'm not only here to talk about um, Forests, but I'm here to tell you a story about Dennis. Um, he's 42 and a forestry manager in Lahima, which is um, a, a, a national um, forest and national um, so, um, yeah forest here. Anyway, so one day when he was uh, going out, he discovered that there was a beetle infestation in um, his forests, and he was thinking what he could do about it and um, how he could potentially stop. These, these beetles spreading and endangering the forest. So one thing that is, that is very, very important in this case is that you actually have a meticulous documentation about what's going on, that you actually know what happens where, um, that you have a precise understanding of the current situation, because eventually um, this also means probably that you have to cut down some trees in, 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 in some spaces, and if you choose the wrong spaces, you cut down trees, but you didn't even solve the problem. So it's really uh, important that you have a precise understanding of the situation you are faced with. So um, for that, QField offers um, a fieldwork app, um, which is for your mobile phones, for your tablets, Android, iOS, and so on, um, which allows you to digitize data in the field, collect data. For instance, here we see um, uh, pictures that you can take pictures um, of, of any of the objects that you survey. You can also attach um, audio or video and um, much more information. Um, to, to your um, objects that you get in the field, that you collect in the field. So now I wonder if actually this, yeah, it does work. Good, is it the correct one? Right. So um, there are also um, some efficient workflows that, that will help you in the field. So for instance here, what is possible is that you can actually track the areas, that, that um, some areas. So you can um, start and just uh, walk around or drive around an area and um, this way digitize um, exactly the area of the spread, uh, go about it and have it all as data in your centralized uh, data sources. Um, we can also see at the bottom um, that there are a lot of uh, additional information available. Um, for instance, uh, a lot of, uh, for those of you who work with high precision GNSS, it's like PDOP and HDOP uh, precision attributes um, that will uh, make it possible for you to assess the quality of the data later on. Um, it also comes with some quite advanced um, things, so I'll spare you the basics for today. Um, what you can do is, for instance, um, you can have um, point clouds uh, directly attached. So this one is a point cloud uh, data set that is consumed over the air as a cloud optimized point cloud. You can draw a line and um, you get um, uh, yeah, a profile. Unfortunately, the video doesn't stop in the end, but goes back to the beginning, which is a pity. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, quite some uh, advanced things that are inside. This is all thanks to QJS, which runs under the hood of this application. 
which means that we can expose a lot of uh, QGIS functionality and make use of it. But at the same time, what we also always try to is to contribute back to QGIS. We've I've, I've done a talk about that, I think, 10 years ago uh, in Bonn at Fosforgy. I don't know uh, who was there, um, where, which, was, which was mostly under the label um, QField, QGIS first, kind of like always when you try to do things in QField, we try to uh, make it uh, as well in QGIS and, um, and um, improve the whole ecosystem there. Um, now, this is something really nice, and it looks like this video doesn't start automatically. Um, this is something uh, new. There should be a new label, I think, on it, if this is the correct video. Um, if you know QGIS, and I guess you do, <laughs> there is uh, something called processing. And um, it is now um, possible to directly use processing algorithm in QField. Um, so if you can, for instance, rotate your features, and um, I really love the live preview of uh, what's going on. Um, you've seen before that there was this orthogonalize um, possibility. Um, cheer you out to uh, <laughs> the back of the room for uh, sponsoring this functionality. Um, really nice. Uh, basically, if you need your uh, houses completely uh, rectangular or, or, or um, with uh, right angles, um, that can make it exactly the way you need it. What this means is obviously not only um, rectangular houses and uh, rotation, but that means that we just like unlocked a complete set of additional functionality um, in, um, in, in, in QField that you can use for uh, whatever, um, whatever uh, kind of analysis that you, that you could want to do. And we really hope that uh, also this kind of um, an incentivize, incentivizes people that they would actually uh, like have new processing algorithms developed because they need them for QField. They will also be available in QGIS. Right, um, uh, we've seen that, we've definitely seen that. Um, something else which is new, um, for those of you who already know everything, is uh, annotations. So um, if you take a picture, you can now live annotate it. Um, this is quite cool to just uh, put the attention on some particular spots on, uh, on a picture. What's also quite cool is that you can not only take photographies that you just took, but you can have templates around. Um, where this comes from is from, uh, from uh, uh, underground uh, network, management, um, network management, like sewage systems. So they have some templates of manholes in the ground, and they would just uh, then draw on top of that, like where are the inlets, where are the outlets, so they can um, like directly in the field quickly um, um, annotate the situation in a graphical way, which is which is really nice. So that's uh, in the um, newest version of QField now available. And one more thing is, I know that's not a video. This is a um, really really powerful new feature: um, plugins. We have now uh, a plugin system in QField. Um, in the past, <laughs> we have often been asked by people for could you please develop, integrate this functionality in QField? And we felt like, I can understand why you want it, but really I don't want it in QField core for edge cases because this means that we have to maintain it for the upcoming, I don't know how many years, regardless if you still need it or not. Once it's in there, it uh, somehow counts to the maintenance base. And um, with that kind of um, functionality of um, of uh, plugins, we finally are able to really um, have customer-specific extensions to QField. Um, maybe just quickly, what is here, it's quite simple. It's this additional um, uh, symbol here, which is based on your location. It just tells you um, what uh, weather you have to expect. So as long as Dennis is out there in the forest and the thunderstorm is coming, he will be prepared. Um, and uh, for the uh, for the weather, um, for the for the temperature as well, um, we've also done something else, uh, which we call um, Snap. I think it's Snap the name, which is a plugin. Um, quite often, when when you, when you go out um, and and you want to take pictures related to things, um, for those of you who've already done that, it, it, this means like you take a point, you open the uh, you, you 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 open the camera, you zoom around, you 
you snap a picture and then finally it will be out, you have to accept the, pic, uh, the, the feature in the end, which is, I don't know, seven clicks or so until you actually get a point at the current location with a picture, which is a regular thing to do and shouldn't take that many clicks. So we did another um, plugin that uh, just allows you to have a camera button there. You click the camera button and within a couple of seconds you have taken a picture you have at the current position done. Um, I guess you can imagine that this uh, will uh, open up quite a few uh, new possibilities with uh, specific uh, use cases where you need to pre-fill attributes with some efficient uh, data entry masks. Um, and I'm happy to say that you don't need to come to us to do plugins, you can just do them yourselves. And I have uh, a couple of stickers with me here, um, a limited amount of them, not too many. Um, so uh, if you feel like writing a plugin, uh, it's not so difficult. Um, some first participants ap apparently have already one, do already have one. Um, yeah, so it's not difficult to write a plugin. Uh, we have a booth over there, come by and uh, show us your plugin or ask us how to do one. Um, you can do anything. I think you could integrate some machine learning. That's what you should do in 2024, I'm pretty sure, or uh, other fancy stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, last internet connection. If tennis is around in the forest, suddenly he doesn't have an internet connection. And um, I'm sure you all know the answer to that. We can also work offline with QField. Um, thanks to uh, Qful Cloud, which is a backend that we offer as a service on app Qful Cloud uh, that helps you manage your teams if you have multiple people out there to synchronize all the collected data into one central database. And um, you can easily take, um, yeah, track your things if you want. It's all open source. You can also host it on your own. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, this is something that we that we offer as a service as well. Um, obviously, um, it's now let me check. Yes, obviously, um, as GIS experts, we love data, but users out there, decision makers, they often don't directly want to have data. Instead, they like to have reports. So. Um, Dennis needed to send the mayor of the city a report and um, he could use a QGIS print layout to prepare everything and then collect the data and directly with the live collected data prepare a PDF in the field and send it by mail to the mayor, which he obviously found really nice and, um, and could, do, um, could work with. Um, yeah, so QField, three um, Amazonia, in meanwhile, it's a 3.3 Darien, um, is a digital public good, which is um, United Nations approved, uh, has won uh, some award, uh, best of Swiss apps in the enterprise category, with uh, one million downloads, and actually that's wrong, it's not on Android and iOS and Windows, it's actually on Android, and on top of that there is iOS and Windows and Mac OS and whatnot, um, which is quite a lot, quite good ratings, um, we're quite happy with uh, <laughs> what it is. Um, yeah, so finally, Dennis could save the forest, um, make everyone happy. <laughs> um, but obviously there is not just the Beatles, it's also about um, managing your, your, your data in general. Um, everybody was really happy, the mayor, because he got his PDF, uh, was also very happy, so he decided to use Qful much more on um, many other and new projects. Um, basically, you can use it on, I, I, I mentioned some examples of uh, underground uh, management and um, infrastructure management. Uh, it, there were examples uh, for, of Qful um, using it for uh, mapping refugee camps. Uh, it is used by uh, national um, <laughs> surveying agencies in a country not so far north from here. Um, and um, there, is, uh, yeah, there are many, many use cases. It's highly adaptable to your purpose. A slide, obligatory slide about us. OpenGIS is uh, the company behind it, um, and um, we do also consulting and help you. So in case um, you use QField and at some point you need a professional support or you want to have a new feature integrated, we are very happy if you just send us a message about uh, what you need, but also if you want, you can also send us a message just about the cool 
project that you've done and uh, I don't know, send us a, a report and we'll be happy to share it um, to show the world what you can do with QField. Um, right, so there is actually much, much more that I could talk about um, for QField. Um, I would still have five minutes, I will not use them, <laughs> I'm afraid, so I'm looking forward to, to your questions later. Um, now we have uh, we've actually, uh, in the last months, we've done uh, an enormous improvement on, on many, many levels. Um, like also construction tools are uh, becoming better and better. There's like snapping support. There is a support for um, snapping to specific angles if you rotate something. Um, there is now also in the pipeline for soon um, geofencing. So basically that the um, tennis can get some alerts if he enters a protected area, that uh, his phone will vibrate and tell him to get um, out there as soon as possible. Um, there are many things that are in there, um, but I think I'll just uh, leave it at that and um, ask you to ask me questions. <laughs> Thank you. So thank you, Matthias. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Thanks, Matthias. It was great, these new features. I have one uh, question regarding the cloud. Uh, for example, if you would like to use our cloud, how would be you know, possible this connection, you know, taking serving the data with the QField, but not using the QField cloud? For example, in our company or in our country, we would like to use our cloud. How is this connection? Is it possible? and how is your support in this way? Um, yes, this is possible. So Qful Cloud is uh, an open source application available on GitHub. So basically you are uh, free to just download and install it and run it on your machines um, if you have the capacity to do so. So that's definitely possible. Um, otherwise, um, it's also possible that you ask us to run it for you. Either uh, we do it on one of the servers we know best because we're quite efficient at in running it in infrastructures we know, but we can also run it for you on your servers. So that's all possible. Um, it's, yeah, open source and available. Just decide how. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Matthias, you mentioned that QField is powered by QJS engine? Like you got the entire QJS in, on the mobile phone or how does it work? Yes, this is correct so far. So if we rewind um, 15 years maybe, um, there was um, a Google Summer of Code, basically a development project to start with something called a QGIS Mobile, QGIS for Android. Um, which uh, was the first time that QGIS could run on, on a tablet. Um, that uh, was really the complete QGIS, but uh, it was quite obvious that with plenty of small buttons, um, this is not really something you want to use in the field. That's uh, why uh, we, we, we developed uh, this new interface on, on top of it. The big advantage is still that the rendering, the, the, the map appearance that you get is exactly the same. So if you configure something in, Q in QGIS for your map, it's the same on QField. If you configure your, um, your um, attribute forms, for instance, it's also based on the QGIS configuration. So there's also a lot of, I think, uh, the advantage for users is that you don't need to learn many new things, but actually the skill set that you learn when you use QField is, is also very, very usable for, for QGIS. But yeah, basically it is, uh, a cross-compiled QGIS running on, on, on the machine. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned plugins, but you didn't mention which language right. are they written on. My bad, I should <laughs> have. <laughs> um, it is a bit different from um, the, um, the QGIS plugin system. Uh, what we use here is uh, JavaScript for, for plugins. Um, I don't know how many people now got uh, encouraged or discouraged <laughs> from writing plugins. Um, anyway, like the whole user interface in uh, of QField, like the, the, the shiny uh, animated things and so on in, inside there, they are already based on JavaScript, which made it a logical choice because we already have a JavaScript framework. 
And um, it's not based on, sorry if I'm a bit technical here, the, the widget system that QGIS uses, which is like buttons and so on, uh, optimized for desktop systems. It's really uh, more, if you think of it like a web page, HTML, where you also have buttons, but they don't look the same. Um, so really, that's, that's much, much more influence from that side. So shipping a Python stack, not having the same QGIS app, um, uh, ecosystem, not being able to also easily install Python modules from somewhere in there and so on. It, it would come with a couple of uh, challenges um, to rely on Python. It would also make the Q field application, I don't know, increase in, in size and so on, um, which, which, which meant uh, a decision for JavaScript would be better integrated, uh, but it comes with some learning curve and um, we're currently working on an API documentation and um, there are some, like the plugins that I mentioned, they are on GitHub. So if you want to get some experience, uh, so some, yeah, some experience, um, you can find them. And we've also written a blog post uh, detailing uh, some of the technical details to get started to, yeah, to make the, the, this easier to, uh, I don't know, start from something that works and then fine tune it to, to your needs. Any more questions from the audience? It's a little uh, technical question, Matthias. Is there any possibility to uh, the PostJS layer with the internet connection to be updated in the field without using the cloud? Yes. How? <laughs> <laughs> um, since QField ships a QGIS inside, it also ships with the QGIS data providers, among them a Postgres data provider. So all you need to do is to get a QGIS project that connects to a Postgres database onto your device. You can either send that by email, text message, whatever, download it as zip file, um, load it via USB cable onto your device, and um, even uh, use QField Cloud just as a means to transport the QGIS project file to your, to your device in the end. It's, it's live updated. If, if you have it like this, you don't get the offline capabilities. So you, if, if you know that you always have 5G network coverage, Wi-Fi, whatever, then uh, it's completely fine to just in your, like in your office uh, to work on a, on a Postgres uh, connection. Um, yeah, like as soon as the network gets unstable, things tend to be more difficult. Um, so you really want to think well and test well before you do that, but it is, it is possible there are people who, who do that, yeah. Yeah, uh, we got a couple of minutes, so I got fi one final question. Could you scroll one slide back? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, so looking at like list of sponsors and organizers, there's one weird thing that stands out. Like maybe do you know the story behind the logo of QField Cloud? <laughs> <laughs> Tough question, tough question. Um, I, I, I signed an NDA that I won't disclose this information. <laughs> no, um, we, we um, actually had a couple of years back, um, we decided to go with, with bees as our uh, mascot um, for the company. We did a big, I don't know if some of you have seen uh, QG's on the road, which was a, a story that we told about beekeeping. Back in the days, and ever since, we never we never got away from that topic. So, uh, uh, yeah, some say it's an ant, some say it's a bee. Um, the name is Nuki, at least. So, um, if you see Nuki somewhere, say hi. <laughs> okay, thank you, Matthias. Uh,